<clears throat> so today we're going to look at sleep and health. Um, I've been doing a series on this. Um, lack of sleep can cause death, most often due to uh, sleepy driving. Um, actual full-blown lack of sleep is a, uh, an in, a uh, genetic problem that causes death as well, but in, in a much slower, maybe it takes two to three years. Uh, but that's not what this is today. This is lack of sleep and more chronic diseases, obesity, uh, insulin resistance, diabetes, hypertension. Uh, we're going to focus on the first three, uh, obesity, um, diabetes, and uh, insulin resistance, and actually get into a study that talks about the hormone, the actual hormone responses with uh, moderate loss of sleep. This, by the way, is obviously a, um, a picture from, from the Middle Ages. The, um, the painter's name was Peter the Elder. And the, uh, again, the obvious relationship here is with sleep and food. So <clears throat> let's start with a um, high-level um, lit review. But before we do that, Quick introduction, Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R, -E um, founder and medical director of uh, PrevMed, heart attack, stroke, cancer, disability prevention. Uh, <clears throat> again, we're doing a series of articles regarding sleep and health. Now, the bottom line is you see a lot of uh, debate in literature around science on things like macronutrients, you know, low-carb versus plant-based and uh, all of that debate. I'm not getting into that today. My point about that is there's a lot of debate. There is no debate about lack of sleep and health. What's the disconnect with our population is that we don't look at it. We don't think about it. And it's a, it seems to be a hidden issue. Even people that are aware of it forget about getting proper sleep during uh, their day their daily work life and their weekly work life. Okay, so let's, again, look at uh, overall studies. This is the International Journal of Endocrinology. This is a great um, sleep and metabolism, an overview. And it is a great overview. It's a review of the science that's out there. Um, the authors are... Um, Sunil Sharma and Manu Kavuru. Uh, these, they are at the uh, Greenville, North Carolina um, <clears throat> Department of uh, Pulmonary Clinical Care and Sleep Medicine and Internal Medicine, again, at Greenville, North Carolina. Great study. I'll actually look at that in more detail a little bit later. But <clears throat> the purpose for today's video is to just go into one of the clinical trials and demonstrate some of the... Uh, the level of hard science that's that's seen in this area. This is another overview. It has to do with uh, sleep, uh, uh, appetite, and obesity. What's the link? Uh, this is in PLOS, um, Public Library of Sciences and the Medicine uh, Group. PLOS, if you haven't heard about it, it was uh, started by a Nobel Prize winning scientist and head of uh, the NIH to, uh, again, to get good science out there. This study is obviously where I got the, uh, the opening uh, image about sleep and uh, food. I'm not going to get into depth on that uh, other than to say, okay, I'll give you the author in case you want to look it up. Uh, Patricia Prinz and uh, December 7th, 2004. Again, <clears throat> a lot of good science has been, continued to develop since then. Um, again, these are old studies, but they're crystal clear. And guess what? Even though they're thir over a decade old, people are still ignoring their lack of their problems with lack of sleep. They're ignoring sleep as a major health uh, determinant. To get back to some of that debate about what causes diabetes, again, you can go into uh, the internet anywhere and plant-based versus low-carb guys reviewing my uh, videos, 
get into passionate debate about those two. The science is, there are arguments about that. There's room for debate. There is no room for debate about short sleep duration and its association with um, diabetes, obesity, uh, and poor health. Yet again, even though there's no, no argument with it, we, tend, we continue to ignore it. This, if you want to look at it, uh, December uh, pl uh, plus Public Library of Science uh, Medicine, December 7th, 2004. Again, a decade old. A um, couple of authors here, uh, Tahari Ta and Ling Lin. Um, so I wanted to get it. This is a randomized clinical trial wanted to get into some of the basics and details on it so you, again, can see the kind of science that's already out there. These guys were at uh, Wisconsin, and they looked at multiple employers within with Wisconsin. They opened this study up to uh, people 30 to 60 years old, all employees, uh, four state uh, agencies, Wisconsin... Um, they sent mailers to them. Now, that was, uh, the end there was 29-17. Uh, overnight sleep study protocol, 1,400. In other words, 51% agreed to an overnight sleep study protocol. Uh, they did morning fasting blood glucose on uh, 1,024. Um, Sleep Diary on 721. So again, <clears throat> you, uh, significant numbers. And here's some of the things that they looked at. Polysomnography, total sleep uh, time, or TST, sleep efficiency, and we'll talk about how that was measured. Uh, wake after sleep onset, or WASO. Looked at other things, too, like... Um, a questionnaire on usual sleep. Uh, they looked at hormones and metabolites, and we'll go into those, some of the detail on what they were looking at. And uh, they also looked at sleep diary on, this, on these individuals. Average night of sleep, uh, average nightly sleep with naps. Again, just going into maybe weed level detail on one of the studies that's been out there for a long time indicating uh, poor sleep wreaks havoc with our uh, endocrine system. So again, these are some of the details about uh, things they looked at. Polysomnography, um, total sleep time, sleep efficiency, uh, waking after sleep onset, self-reported usual hours of sleep, average hours of sleep, Nightly hours of sleep with nap. Okay, hormones. Uh, we looked at ghrelin. Le uh, they looked at ghrelin, leptin, um, adiponectin, insulin, and glucose. Metabolites. They looked at LDL, SDL, I mean uh, HDL, LDL, uh, total cholesterol, triglycerides, glucose. And this quickie is a... It's a glucose indicator that they used. But they looked at medical conditions such as hypertension, which is also uh, related to and seems to be a, an effect of low uh, hours of sleep. They also looked at things like medication use, antidepressants, antihypertensives, uh, cholesterol-lowering medications, insulin, other, um, other medications that could impact glucose. So you see, again, they looked at multiple things with these people. They did sleep studies on them. They did survey, uh, um, interview surveys. Uh, they looked at lifestyle habits such as smoking, alcohol. They looked at uh, hormone levels. And let's get to that in just a second. Here is the, the most critical image regarding hormone levels. This is, guess what? Um, leptin. And this is ghrelin. 
And this is the number of hours of sleep. So leptin, <clears throat> uh, there's back and forth regarding leptin. Leptin is supposed to decrease hunger. It is um, released by the fat cells. Now, one of the there, there's confusion in the literature about that because sometimes as people get obese, they can get more and more leptin out there. Uh, you would think, therefore, uh, you would think that it would have the opposite effect. What appears to happen is that obese people tend to get leptin resistant, similar to insulin resistant. So, <clears throat> Anyway, in this study, increased uh, number of hours of sleep, increased leptin, and therefore decreased appetite. This is probably the bigger one, uh, more convincing, because there's no argument about ghrelin. There's no uh, information out there indicating that uh, uh, with a, a contrasting effect like you see with leptin. The higher the ghrelin, the more hungry you are. The lower the ghrelin, the less hungry you are. The more sleep you get, the lower the ghrelin, the less hungry that you are. So again, <clears throat> into maybe excruciating detail on on this issue, but I just wanted to show you a little bit about the science. Um, here's a couple of other things. They look when they looked at uh, insulin and Quickie, which was their uh, uh, insulin indicator. Look at these probability numbers. Point oh. Oh, one. one in 1,000 probability that they would get that out of a random uh, outcome. In other words, it's very clear uh, lack of sleep causes insulin resistance. The research is out there. It's really good. There's, uh, there's no debate about that. And yet we continue to cut our sleep below seven hours.